the paywall for publishing is definitely a big barrier and uh, it makes for a class system in academia and in research in general. So those that already have can easily have lots more. And no matter how good your research is, if you don't have money to pay for that, uh, you are blocked. I somehow thought everything should be open access ever since, I don't know, I remember. Um, and then I was shocked to find out that sometimes I can't access my own paper published in some journal because we don't have access to that particular subscription and I, and I, at IIT. And I was, what do you mean, what do you mean? I, don't, I don't have my own paper? I want to see my own paper. And so that was shocking. <laughs> Open access can help solve the problems of making research material available to anyone that wants it or needs it. Often researchers are getting funding from government or other public institutions, uh, performing their research, writing about it, uh, getting it peer reviewed for free by other researchers, and then being forced to buy that work that they did back. I can list off the top of my head, which I won't do right now, several journals that I have specifically sought out that have good standing, are zero pay to publish, and are open access. And I've made a conscious choice to publish with those in the last few years, specifically to address the escalating cost of publication and to get around what for me, as an intellectual and as an academic, to me, what is a ludicrous and self-serving situation where publicly funded research is obstructed from the public. A group of about 11 European funding agencies uh, came out with a statement recently saying that as of 2020, none of the research that they fund is allowed to be published in a paywall journal. That's crazy, as in <laughs> that's going to have an impact because they spend over $7 billion annually on funding. And maybe researchers are going to say, that's not fair, I'm stuck. But if that's the case for everybody, how are you stuck? There will be then an open access journal that suddenly gets all these amazing publications worthy of funding, therefore, they're going to have amazing publications worthy of citing, therefore, whatever thing you use to judge a journal is going to, you know, that, that, that rating is going to increase. The open access uh, publications I can't say that they're cited more, but they are read more. And these are not exactly overlapping, but they're not unrelated statistics. And uh, the importance of it, the importance of reads versus cites is really difficult to quantify, but you can't be, you can't not be affecting people's opinion if they are reading your articles. There is still a lingering perception at online journals in the 21st century, in the second decade of the 21st century, that online journals are somehow inferior. Go download these freely available papers over the past eight years and see who is on the board of editors and see who is on the advisory board and decide for yourself whether these are the leaders in the field or not, and they are. I think if you can choose, I would tell people go ahead and choose it. It's very easy to have a narrow focus for your own immediate needs, um, but anyone who is in academia has at least at some point considered something greater than they are. And in my experience of being part of this particular academy, that feeling runs strong and with a great deal of pride. And I would support, encourage uh, any of my colleagues who are able to, to take a little bit longer to think about where they publish and consider strongly going for the open access model and if it makes sense for them going for the no pay model as well and make use of that money for a studentship or some donation that makes sense. So here at Galvin Library we support open access by supporting an institutional repository. The institutional repository is a place where all student faculty and staff at Illinois Tech can submit their digital work and make it accessible to anyone online.